I want to give you a brief overview of the importance of magnesium, and actually it's very short supply in the American diet, especially the American diet. Magnesium actually is a very abundant mineral, and it used to be more prevalent in our soil and in the plants that we consume. But today, um, a lot of trace minerals are missing from plants. Now, magnesium might not actually be considered a trace mineral, but it's an essential in, in mineral. Now, one point I want to bring out, when you're looking at the very, very ancient, and I'm talking ancient like prehistoric diet of mankind, the ratio from magnesium to calcium was one to one in a paleo diet. You're talking about prehistoric times. And actually, this type of diet is the most healthy. This is really where mankind would thrive the best under the paleo diet. The magnesium, again, the magnesium to uh, calcium ratio was one to one. Today, in a modern diet, it's between 10 10 to 1 to 15 to 1, in other words, calcium to magnesium. And what this creates is a major problem because magnesium tells the calcium where to go, not just, not just um, vitamin D3 combined with K2, but magnesium. And magnesium has other functions. Now, one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is like there's a, an array of valuable supplements, minerals, and herbs out there. But there's also a cost factor. You know, one vitamin that actually is very uh, cost efficient for what the benefits you get out there is vitamin C. And there's a lot of videos on vitamin C. But there's not too much on magnesium. Um, there's entire books written on the benefits of magnesium. Now, magnesium, magnesium actually has several benefits. It can actually help raise the body's ATP, which is the energy systems whereby gives you a lot better processing of your chemical energy, which is the carbohydrates, fats, and other ways your body gets energy into the cells itself through ATP. But without the magnesium, you don't have that electric spark of life to do the job. Now, there's other supplements you could take that, are, that could raise ATP. Usually, you'll see a combination of alpha-lipoic acid and acetyl-L-carnitine, and you also would want to take CoQ10 with that and maybe biotin to help process the carbohydrates, but that is more expensive. And, you know, I'm just putting out something that's very cheap, but there's a lot of other benefits besides, you know, energy and the fact that our diet has the wrong ratio now of calcium to magnesium. Because what happens is when we have too much calcium and there's not enough magnesium, you have is a calcification of not just, the, you have the bone structure getting calcified, and then you have like arthritis, you have conditions where you have problems moving joints. You also have calcification of the veins, arteries, and heart, and calcification of the brain. Calcification of the bladder, and calcification of the kidneys. Magnesium can actually be benefit in preventing kidney stones if you take adequate magnesium. Thing is, it's very cheap. Now, what, there are several forms of magnesium that you could take. You can take, like, magnesium oxide, magnesium citrate. Probably the best thing to take is a combination of the, the few types, that, and it's also in a chelated form. Because one of the problems with mag, taking magnesium is it doesn't absorb into the body very well. And you could take too much whereby you would have loose stools. That could be a problem. But uh, normally... Almost everybody in the United States, virtually everybody, our diet is between, you know, it, it, in other words, the diet is a ratio of 10 parts calcium, 10 to 15 parts calcium and one part magnesium, whereas in ancient prehistoric times, it was one to one. One to one is far more beneficial. So it's not that we're necessarily getting too much calcium, it's that we're not getting enough magnesium. So the magnesium directs the calcium how it's to be used in a body. Now there's other aspects of magnesium that work in, for, to your psychological benefit. Magnesium has been known to reduce anxiety. Anxiety, stress, which also leads to higher levels of cortisol, which actually can lead to you know, high, higher body fat content because of the release of the hormone uh, cortisol. But most people in the modern day environment have you know, stress and anxiety. 
Magnesium can help alleviate this. Now, um, you know, one of the things why it's not done is like I put this up here, monetize your anxiety. That might be the mantra of the psychological pharmaceutical world because they're not going to make a lot of money just prescribing uh, magnesium because it's very, very cheap. It's a very, very abundant element on the Earth's crust. You can get magnesium supplements for last year, year for probably five, ten dollars. It's it's that cheap, but it's but it's extremely beneficial. But there's no money in prescribing magnesium. Now the other thing is, there's some things that it can actually have an effect on our entire culture because they have done experiments with rats when they deprived them and they put them on like you know they had zero magnesium, they became more aggressive. Uh, and aggressive behavior, anxiety, depression, and fear all relate to criminal activity. In other words, if you feel, you know, more stable, you're not going to, you know, you're much less prone to committing a crime. And a lot of times this stability is, you know, due to a lack, you know, having it or not having it is a lack of a nutri nutrient. <clears throat> and ma magnesium is a very, very, very cost-effective nutrient. You would think they would make sure in schools they all had adequate magnesium, I don't know if it was in a water supply or whatever. Not not a psychotropic drug, but magnesium. Um, they would even have this in the rehabilitation sections of prisons or something, whereby, you know, people would have adequate nutrition So, and healing music. But our government doesn't seem to be in the business of rehabilitating people or making them better in a real way. Um, but mag a lack of magnesium could also have, you know, bring about, you know, having this fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the future, fear of being weak and worthless, and all this kind of garbage. That's your anxiety, depression, and all this other stuff all relied, you know, wrapped into one. And, you know, we have these things like Depression Awareness Month. And, like, to me, it's just a huggy, feely, good, good thing. You know, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have Depression Awareness Month, and there's another Awareness Month of everything else. But in the case of these type of things, a lot of this could be alleviated with um, just magnesium. Like in a case of, um, like I think when they prescribe Prozac, um, it raises your serotonin levels, your feel-good levels, um, which you can also do with exercise. I mean, exercise brings up your serotonin levels also, or just going to the beach or something. But um, you know, a lot of these psychological disorders that are treated with, you know, psychotropic meds, which, again, the psychotropic med industry is a large part of the pharmaceutical industry, and the pharmaceutical industry is a large part of the equities that we see, you know, in the stock market going up and down the general stock market. There's a lot of psychotropic drug companies within that. So if a lot of these things are replaced with simple elements, like magnesium being one of the cheapest ones out there and the most effective bang for the buck that would treat many psych psychotropic disorders, also... Um, balance the calcium magnesium ratio back to the paleo diet recipe which is extremely uh, healthy bring up your energy and stop calcification or lower calcification risk of the heart kidneys bladder your joints your arteries and veins in the brain in other words you'd be a lot more alert too because magnesium actually is a the spark of life it's an electrical conduit in a lot of ways and, you know, they don't really advocate for this uh, because, you know, there's, like, there's actually several aspects to the magnesium. One aspect is the psych psychological aspect, you know, the anxiety, depression, aggressive de de dis behavior, stress, fear, and all that type of stuff being lowered greatly by, by, when you have adequate mu uh, magnesium. But then that goes against the controlling man as an animal industry, you know, called psychiatry or whatever, so, which is very much profit motivated and also connected to the elites, you know, controlling the population. So, and you also got to remember when you're talking calcification, what's another thing that I left out? I mean, I talked about, you know, the joints, the, you know, the ankle, the, the, the veins, the arteries, the heart, the brain, the, the kidneys, the bladder. What about the penile gland, the one that actually gives your third sense? where you're connected to everybody, the calcification of the penile gland. So 
Would not mag magnesium also uh, stop that or alleviate that problem? See, this is one of the reasons they're not pushing this, too, right? So, it has a lot of uses. It has a lot of uses. It's not just, it's energy, it's vitality, a mental alertness, but mental, I don't know, good health mentally, like, in other words, alleviation of stress, anxiety, depression. But, you know, if you're somebody on the grain doll from the pharmaceutical company, your name is, you know, PsychMD, um, you're not going to get any money, even if you have 10,000 patients that are on magnesium. First off, why would they have to go to you to get the magnesium? For the second off, even if they had to, how much money are you going to make off of uh, $10 of magnesium worth of magnesium for a year's supply? See? That's why it's not being done. It's all in the money. All in the money. But, uh, you know, it, you can also, uh, you know, you can also take milk of magnesia, which actually has magnesium in there, in there. And there's foods that are higher in magnesium. Sometimes, you know, some of the nuts and fruits and nuts and stuff have more magnesium in them. But it's probably good to take a supplement. And I would recommend, I know there's various advantages to, like, taking magnesium citrate or magnesium oxide. But I would get a chelated version of it. A, a chelated version that has two or three kinds of magnesium in it. And, I, you know, I don't think there's too many problems with there being fake magnesium out there. That's another issue because I know some of these supplement that you – I have seen the studies on the, from the FDA. I know you're saying FDA, but, you know, sometimes they're good. Um, that they tested supplements from Walgreens, Walmart, Target, GNC, and they found them to be – some of the supplements to be 100% fake which was like echinacea and salt palmetto. They had like rice bran powder in it. I don't know if they would fake magnesium, but I personally get all my supplements from Puritan Pride and also Swanson Vitamins. And I don't think they have any fake stuff out there. Because I think the other part of this is like if you, if a lot of, if everybody started gravitating towards supplements and vitamins, they would try to say, well, there's fake stuff out there. Well, 90% of the problem with the fake stuff is because it's from these big box retail outfits and even the people that are selling um, prescription meds also. From places that are vitamin companies only, and they check the, you know, the batches, and they test check the batches, um, you're not going to have problems. You're not going to have problems. It'd be better than, because I don't, I don't want the government getting involved in a vitamin and mineral supplement business. In the case of magnesium, though, it's such an abundant mineral on this earth. It's far more abundant than even calcium is. But everybody's been told, take calcium, take calcium, take calcium. Actually, calcium is very necessary to the body. It's true. But the problem is, if you don't have that, if you don't have that one-to-one -one ratio, which we normally have a 10 to 15 calcium ratio to one part magnesium, if you don't have that one-to-one -one ratio, you're nowhere near the paleo diet. This is why our ancestors, this is partly why our ancestors had so much energy to do there's almost superhuman things that they were able to do. You know, going out on a hunt for three days in a row without food and having the energy to do it because uh, having that right ratio, magnesium to ca uh, calcium, also helps raise the ATP. It's not the only thing, but it's the cheapest thing. And that's one of the main points why I'm bringing this out. This is probably the most bang for the buck you can ever get. Uh, and I, I just it's almost ludicrous to think of all the people out there with arthritis, or joint pain, back pain, or, I don't know, depression, anxiety, or whatever the heck they got, fear, uh, stress levels in a modern society. You know, I'm, in, I'm a, basically a senior citizen. I don't have any of these things. None. I feel great. You know, I'm out there doing stuff all the time. And I got no pain. None. Okay? <laughs> and I feel fine. So, uh, I'm like, you know, why is this? Maybe it's because I take a lot of supplements. I don't know. But I'm trying to tell you, like, you know, if I if I told you every single supplement I take, you would probably be overloaded. So I try to give it down to the simple core of what I think is the best, especially for the money, the most effective for the money. And also, what's, what is generally ignored by a lot of people? If you pick up a lot of your vitamin pills in the stores today, you look at the back of the vitamin, what's in it, you won't see too much on the way of magnesium or or if it does have it, it has, you got to watch these recommended daily allowances because that is not necessarily the, 
optimal daily allowance. It's nowhere near it. But uh, you know, usually you need like uh, you know 250 milligrams or something or more of magnesium to really be effective, uh, and that's assuming that it gets absorbed. So, monetize your anxiety. Well, that's <laughs> you're not going to monetize your anxiety with magnesium. I can tell you that right now. That's why they don't use it. There's no money in magnesium. I mean, unless you're selling uh, magnesium fire starters. Now, don't take that and don't consume those. You got There's certain things you, you take, <laughs> you know, and consume the right way. I mean, it's got to be from a, a supplement company, but I'm sure magnesium has a lot of worth in other industries. But as far as in the pharmaceutical industry, no, 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 definitely not. And I think they fear that the public would pick up on this because this would alleviate a lot of problems. And also, I think it would alleviate a lot of crime in the United States. Because when you take away a lot, a, a, a significant measure of anxiety, depression, fear, stress, your feeling of being alone, neglected, defective, shameful, whatever, there's all these words on there, <laughs> deficient, lost, helpless, and all this other garbage. If you take away a lot of that stuff in society, you're going to have a lot, you know, and everybody's a little more, you know, stable, whatever you want to call it. You're not going to have as much crime, you know. But it's it's not. But then again, if you're decalcifying your penile gland, people are going to be a lot more aware of what's really going on. Because I could tell you, if there's one thing that if you want to decalcify to really make you aware, and I wish I could put out a lot of information because that I could really, oh well, I could put I could cook I could cook onto things like a laser, and I wish I could. But, you know, you know, things are going on to major media platforms today. You can't. You know, controlling man as an animal, that should be, that could be the mantra of a lot of the major media and the, the, the tech giants. Uh, but, you know, just giving you some information here. And uh, go run with the ball. I mean, it's uh, definitely worthwhile and it's definitely proven. And I have read numerous books by medical doctors, DOs, and NDs, and everything else. And, you know, it, they're constantly bringing this up. It's, but when I'm looking at the cost involved, <laughs> magnesium is one of the cheapest supplements out there. But, you know, it's not right now, it's not, it's not the buzzword, you know. But again, just remember, our ancestors were taking a ratio of magnesium, and their paleo diet were taking our really primitive ancestors who were very, very strong, robust, and, you know, their main problem was running into woolly mammoths and things like that. But, I mean, otherwise, if they were in a nice heated house, an air-conditioned house, and had running water <laughs> in a bathroom with a flushing toilet, and, you know, if you know if they were eating a paleo diet and they were living under, they probably would have lived 200 years. And their ratio of magnesium to calcium was one-to-one. -one. Now, I mean, cal or calcium to magnesium was one-to-one. -one. Today's ratio is 10 parts, 10 to 15 parts calcium to magnesium. That is why everybody's like, you know, they're really, I'm not, I can tell you that, I'm not, I feel great. Anyway, over now.